Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Coffee with Katie. I have my sweater weather mug today. So today's video is going to be a January book tag. I recently just discovered this book tag because I was watching um, Sydney Bookworm do it. But this tag was started by Jan Agaton. She is a fellow booktuber and she's the one that started this tag and I thought it was a really cool idea and wanted to try it for myself. So I'm just gonna go through the questions. If you watch this and decide you would also like to participate in this tag, I tag you. So yeah, I just thought this was a fun thing to kind of kickstart your reading year and go through and answer some of these questions and just have fun with it. So the first question is, what is the last book you read last year? And for me, that is Where Dreams Descend by Janelle Angelis. I finished this book towards the end of December and I thought it was a good way to end the reading year. And it was definitely one that I had been trying to get to all year. So I barely got it in there in the nick of time. And you know, it was a fun read. There was a lot of magic, atmosphere, tension, and hopefully I'll be able to get to the sequel this year. The second question is, what is your first read of this year? So the first book that I finished this year is All of Us Villains by Amanda Foodie and Christine Lynn Herman. I think I've been leaving her name off of everything. Um, this was my first read of 2021 and it was a five-star read. So my reading year is off to a great start. I loved this book. There's a lot of morally great characters. There's a lot of moral dilemmas in this book. There's a lot of villainous themes. They're in a tournament to kill each other. So there's a lot of themes that are being delved into in this and a lot of magic and a lot of monster stories and it was just a lot of fun. I loved it so much. So it was a great start to this year. The third question is share three of your reading goals for this year. So I would say some of my goals for this year for my channel is definitely to grow my channel, you know, put out more content, get more followers, the normal stuff like that. But another one of my goals would be to complete more of the series that I've started. I'm in general pretty good about starting series and then wanting to continue them, but I do know I have several right now that I have started and just need to continue and finish. So I would say even if I start a new series this year, just making sure that I'm trying to go through and complete all of the series that I have open, I would say that's a big one. So I'm not just picking up the first book and then moving on to something else for my next month's TBR and instead making sure I'm putting sequels and trilogies and whatever in my next TBRs. Another one of my goals that I talked about in my January TBR video is that I want to read more of my bookish subscription books. So like Fairy Loot, Illumicrate, you know, all of those that I've gotten in subscription boxes. I have them, a lot of them like behind me with the sprayed edges. And I wanna work on reading more of those because I feel like I get them and I'm really excited about them and then I put them on a shelf and I don't necessarily read them. So I would like to get in the habit of reading those more and so what I did, as I explained in my January TBR video, is I put all of them in a jar and I'm going to draw one every month to try to get to. So hopefully I will be able to read more of those books this year. Overall, my reading goal, like on Goodreads, my reading challenge is 60 books. 2020, I read 33 books, which was not a lot. And my goal for 2021 was 40 books because of how many I read the previous year. And then I read 79 books in 2021. So I was like, well, I could do higher or I could, you know, still bring it up from the previous year, but also make sure I leave myself some room. So my goal for this year is 60 books with the hope that I will surpass that. The fourth question is to share three of your most anticipated releases for 2022. So these three will probably be of no surprise to anyone. And they actually all come out on the same day at the moment, which is nuts. Um, that would be the Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. You guys know I love the Car of All Universe. I loved Once Upon a Broken Heart and I can't wait for the sequel and they, they're all coming out in September. So The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. Definitely looking forward to that and very excited about it. Another one is Kingdom of the Feared by Carrie Maniscalco. It's the third in the Kingdom of the Wicked series, which I read The Kingdom of the Wicked and Kingdom of the Cursed in 2021. So obviously looking forward to that one to finish up the trilogy. And then another one, I'm gonna give you two for the third because one is a graphic novel and one is just a novel. The graphic novel that I'm looking forward to and anticipating so much is Demon in the Wood by Leigh Bardugo. This is a Darkling, like not origin story necessarily, but this is the Darkling before Shadow and Bone trilogy. And it's kind of like a prequel story. And there's a very short story, like if you have the paperbacks, uh, Ruin and Rising, it was in the back of that and it was a short story about him. This is a more expanded version of that in a graphic novel form, so I am very excited about it and I can't wait for it to come out. Another one that's kind of like the first, either just a novel or the first in a series, that I'm really really anticipating is Hotel Magnifique. I'm blanking on the author right now, but I've already talked about it in another video. 
but I'm really looking forward to that book. It sounds magical, whimsical, with a little bit of sinister undertones, which is kind of my vibe in the Caraval way, because I'm not like straight whimsy where nothing makes sense. But uh, that book is, I'm really excited about that book and it sounds like it's gonna be a really fun time. So I'm very much anticipating that. That one comes out in April and I did pre-order it. The fifth question is, which goals did you reach or not reach last year? So 2021. And as I mentioned, my goal, my reading challenge for 2021 was 40 books, but I got to 79. And because of the weird number I was at, I really wanted to hit 80 because it was 79. So I was trying to get one more in and I was like an hour away from finishing another book. So I would say I was one book shy of kind of a personal goal I had made for myself towards the end of the year. I also didn't finish a couple of books that I wanted to get to last year, so that wasn't as fun. But one goal I did make for myself was that I wanted to start my booktube channel, and I did, and I wanted to post consistent content, and I've been trying to do that at least once a week. So I would say that was a goal that I did reach. It's been great to be a part of the booktube community, and I know I'm just getting started, and probably nobody really knows about me yet, but just seeing my followers grow even has been really humbling and really amazing. And it's been really fun for me to just create content and read and just gush about books. And I also read 79 books last year, which was an all time high for me because I'm still getting into this and still getting used to it. And like I said, I read 33 books last year. That was definitely a goal that I reached, even though it's kind of like a double edged sword. <laughs> Question number six is, are there 2022 releases you've heard of that you have no desire to read? Um, I would say most of the ones, I have answers for this, but I would say most of the ones in general that I hear about or that I'm, that capture my attention are ones that I'm interested in, obviously. So a lot of the ones that I think about or remember are the ones that I'm also excited about. But I have heard of a couple recently that I just could not care less. And it doesn't mean anything about these books or these authors or anything. It's just my personal reading taste. Um, the first one is Real Easy by Marie Rakoski. Um, this is just a book that I don't have any desire to read. I know people are really interested in it. I know it makes sense why people would want to see this perspective, but this is like the last thing I want to read. <laughs> so I just don't care. And I think it's about like a girl in the Midwest as a, a stripper? I really don't know. I know it's got like things like that involved in it and it's just not something I wanna read. I just, I think it also turns into like a murder mystery or mystery thriller, but still just not interested. Another one is The Maid by Nita Prose. And I think this is a mystery thriller. <laughs> I've heard the premise for this book multiple times and I still don't know what it is. And I think that's just because I don't care and I don't want to read it. I'm so sorry. This sounds so negative and horrible, but it's just, these are books that I just, I have no interest in them. So things, people say stuff about it and it just whoop, because I just don't care. And I don't, it's not something I want to read. So I don't listen well, or I don't retain the information because it's not interesting to me. And I don't want to save that in my brain if I don't care. Another one that I have no desire to read is The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the third installment in the Inheritance trilogy. I read the first book of this trilogy and I did not read the second, so I don't want to read the third. I do not understand the hype for this series. <laughs> I don't understand the hype for the first book. It was really disappointing to me and I just thought I was bored and it was okay, but I don't get the hype. I don't get why everybody loves it. So I don't want to read the second one and I don't want to read the third one. So I don't care, even though I know there's hype and people are excited about this book coming out. I know. Question number seven is what are some reading habits you want to change this year, if any? I would say that when I get really busy with work and just activities or things that I'm volunteering or involved in, during the week, I, I struggle getting reading done and I kind of put it off to do it on the weekends, but sometimes I have other stuff to do on the weekends as well like filming and editing and stuff that's going on. And so I feel like I don't make as much progress in my books that I want to. So one of the habits I would like to change is I would just like to set aside 30 minutes a day where I'm just reading. And it's not a lot of time. I may not make that much progress, but 30 minutes a day is 30 minutes a day. And so that's kind of something I would like to change this year is just making that a priority. Even if I'm not getting a lot of pages read, just making sure I'm putting in the time every day to do so. Instead of staring at the book, looking at social media and then not reading <laughs> or you know doing other things i would also say i would like to give myself a little bit more freedom with my tbr like i want to have a goal and i want to have a list of books that i'm planning on reading i'm going to continue to do tbrs but say i pick up a book that's in a series 
and I loved the first book and I really want to just pick up the second book right away. I kind of want to give myself a little bit of leeway to do that and not feel like I have to read this next book or I have to read this book because it's on my TBR. And the reason I want to do that is because if there's a book I'm really looking forward to in a moment, I would rather just continue to read those books that I'm thinking of instead of picking something up that I'm not really in the mood for and so it may affect my reading experience of that book and also may put me in a slump and the book that I was really excited to read if that fades in a month and I don't really care at that point then that would also affect my reading so I want to be able to balance more of having a structured TBR while also giving myself freedom to move that around and read things that are really calling to me so I don't get in a slump but also don't feel like guilty if I don't meet my TBR every month. I would say those are two things that I've kind of thought about. Question number eight is, are there any adaptations that you're excited about? There's several, but I have no idea when they're coming out. I did see a couple that are supposed to come out this year, and that was Persuasion by Jane Austen. They're supposed to be in a movie adaptation, a more modern movie adaptation, which I would like to see if that comes out. I struggle reading a lot of classics, but I do really like more modern Jane Austen movies. Another one that I saw, and I don't know if it's coming out this year, is the School for Good and Evil movie. That sounds great. I haven't read The School of Good and Evil, but it's been one that's been on my radar for a while and I've wanted to read. So if that movie comes out, I will definitely see it. The biggest one I would say this year is Lord of the Rings, the prequel story of Lord of the Rings on Amazon. That's supposed to come out in September and that's going to be amazing. I cannot wait to watch more Lord of the Rings content, especially now that they're making it with all the technology and stuff we have. I'm freaking out, but that's going to be really exciting. Can't wait for that. Um, obviously I'd be very excited to see Shadow and Bone season two. I have no idea when that's coming out, but I did see that they did cast Nikolai Lansoff. I don't even know if they've announced who it is, but they did cast Nikolai and that's wonderful. So again, I don't know when season two of Shadow and Bone's coming out, but when it comes out, I will watch it and I will love it. And another one, I don't even know if they've cast or started filming this, but I am excited about the A Court of Thorns and Roses adaptation because I think visually that series is going to be so amazing to watch. Thinking about the battles and the worlds and the magical creatures and the sinister elements to everything and like the Illyrians, I think visually that's going to be so fun to watch and it's going to be like a great adventure as a show. So I am really excited about that whenever it happens, but I have no idea when that's going to be. Question number nine is what is your favorite bookish memory of last year? I'll give you two. So one of them would just be starting my booktube channel. I started this channel the very end of February and kind of like beginning of March is when I really started this channel full force and posting consistently every week. And that was a great time for me. This has been a great outlet. I have really enjoyed it. I've had a lot of fun with it. It's been great to get more followers, to see people watching my videos. That still blows my mind that people watch me. Interacting with all of you in the comments, it's been really great. And that's been one of my favorite memories of last year especially bookish. And when we get to like my year anniversary, that'll be crazy too. Um, the other one was getting an arc of Once Upon a Broken Heart because I know how hard arcs are to get. And when it's from your favorite author, it's just something you treasure so much. So even though like I won a giveaway, I was like in tears because it was just such a cool thing that I had an arc of Once Upon a Broken Heart and I was able to read it early. It was from what became my favorite author and it was just great and magical and it was awesome. And question number 10 is carryovers from last year that you still plan on finishing. Yes, I have a couple. I think I tried to finish a lot of them, but I do have several. The first one being Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. Um, I did start this. I was really enjoying it, but it was just kind of one of those ones that I put down and didn't pick up again. But I do really want to finish it, and so I hope to get to this next month, if not sooner. And it's definitely one that I'm going to read, excited about reading, want to read. <laughs> so it's not like there's anything wrong with it. I just haven't. So this is a carryover. I plan on finishing it. The next one is Truth Witch by Susan Denard. Again, started it, didn't have time to finish it, put it down, never picked it back up again, but also one I'm very curious about. Really would like to read the series this year and finish it out this year. <laughs> so I still plan on finishing this. And another one is The Princess Will Save You by Sarah Henning. Again, <laughs> I started this towards the end of a month on one of my TBRs, didn't get to finish it, started a new TBR. So this is a carryover that I also plan on finishing because I was really enjoying it. Do you guys have that problem? Do you have a problem of like starting a book, getting really excited about it, but then you set like monthly TBRs. So the month ends and you put it down and you pick up a whole new set of books and then it just keeps happening. Obviously that's only three that I know of at the moment. 
but does that happen to you guys? I would like to know. All right, everyone. Well, that was it for today's video and this just fun little January tag. Like I said, if you would like to do this video, uh, consider yourself tagged. I tag you. I think it's just fun to think about, to kind of think about your reading year last year and look forward to your reading year this year and things you want to change, things you were happy with, things you just want to try. I think it's just a good mindset to be in. Please leave in the comments down below what books you think I should get to this year and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Please like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you next time. Stay safe and caffeinated. Bye. Thank you.